Amen. Amen. Jesus said, It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are life and they are spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God is life. The word of God is life. The word of God quickens. The word of God makes alive. The word of God renews. The word of God strengthens. Ah, receive the word of God this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm standing on the word of God. The word of God. I'm standing on the word of God. I'm standing on the word of God. I'm standing on the word of God. Precious Father, we thank you for the entrance of your word that brings light and understanding to the simple. Lord, we receive your word this morning. Be it unto us according to your word. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name forever. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's have a seat. God bless you. Hallelujah. The title of our message this morning is The Wheat and the Tears. The Wheat and the Tears. And um, our text is taken from Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13 from verse 24 to 30 and um, 36 to 43. It's a long read, but I will, I will, I'm not going to start reading now, maybe later on. And um, Well, it's a long message, but I'll just try to put so many things together. If I can finish today, I will. If not, when the Holy Spirit prompts me to stop, I will stop and maybe come back if need be some other time. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 13. Verse 24 to 30 and verses 36 to 43. The wheat and the tears. Now, I want to ask you a question. Are you a wheat or a tear? Are you a wheat or a tear? Maybe we will understand for those of us. It's not a new um, parable. It's not a new story. We are used to this, and several messages have been preached concerning this, even in the house here at different times. Hallelujah. So, are you a witch? We know what the witch is. We know what the tear is. Both were and are permitted to dwell together and grow in the same field. So, the wheat and the tears are operating in the same field. It will get clearer to us as we go on. So the wheat represent the good crops, the good plants, and the tears are the bad crops that cause destruction. Hallelujah and so many other things. But I want to say something that the existence and the appearance of the tears in the vineyard or in the field, so to say, is not a threat to the owner of the vineyard. 
we will get to know as we move on. The owner of the vineyard, according to the parable that Jesus gave, is God. Or Jesus himself. The owner of the vineyard is the Lord of the harvest. So, when you begin to see the appearance of tears among the wheat, he is not intimidated. He is not threatened. It cannot destroy his work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So, in Matthew chapter 13, because of our time, let me quickly move on. He said, now, from verse 24, it starts this way. He said, another parable put he forth unto them. So that shows that there was an underlining parable. Now, in one of the, um, I think in, it's in Mark or Luke, I can't really figure it out. The parable of the sower, that was like the baseline for every other parable that Jesus gave according to Matthew 13, Mark chapter 4, and then Luke chapter 8. There were so many parables that he gave, but the, the baseline for you to be like a, a prerequisite, for you to have a full grasp of every other parable was the parable of the sower. So if you want to understand any parable that Jesus gave, you must understand the parable of the sower. He said it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So he said, another parable. Put, so this discussion is sequel to the parable of the sower. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Another parable he put forth unto them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man who sowed good seed in his field. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Said, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man who sowed good seed. I want us to take note of that. The man here is the son of man. You know, the, and he said he sowed good seed seed in his field. He sowed, that is, he planted good seed in his field. So he's the owner of the field. We will understand what the good, soul, uh, the good uh, seed represents and what the field represents from the mouth of Jesus himself. Hallelujah. But he said, but while men slept. Amen. But while men slept, so many messages have been preached about this. While men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat. I want us to understand that the best of man is still man at his very best. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus gave so many parables about men sleeping. But I, I'm not going to go into that. You know, sometimes we make it look like a crime. But there might be different sides to it for men to sleep. Even the people, the virgins that were expecting the return of the bridegroom, it got to a stage they fell asleep. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. But like I said, I'm not going into all that this morning. So the enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and um, he went in his own way. He said, and he went his way. And when the wheat sprouted, and produce fruits, the tears also appeared. When the wheat began to bring forth fruits, the tears 
began to shoot. So when the enemy sowed tears among the wheat, it was as if nothing happened. And the enemy would be like, wow, <laughs> don't worry. You are in trouble already. I've already plotted my own whatever, devices. So at the time of harvest, or when the, the, the fruits begin to show up, then you will know the trouble that you have got yourself into. But the enemy doesn't know one thing, that you can't be God to it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even before, because God is your creator, even before you planted it, before you thought about it, you already knew. So you already fashioned the way out. So that you are in trouble and you think you are in the hands of the enemy. No. You are in God's hands. I want you to tell somebody, I am in God's hands. It might look like I am in trouble right now. But I am still in God's hands. It might look like I am down right now. But God is up to something. When I am down to nothing, God is up to something. When I cannot cope, Jesus offers hope. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. So until the time of fruit bearing, you don't know what anyone or everyone around you carries. What differentiates trees from one another is the fruit. It is through the fruit that you will know that you can separate a mango tree from a banana tree or an apple tree or an orange tree. When the fruits begin to show, that's when you will know. Matthew chapter 7 verse 16 and verse 20 he said, by their fruits you shall know them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the, like I said, the enemy thought he had, he had the last laugh. But you know there's a saying that he who laughs last, laughs the best. Hallelujah. So when the enemy was just, you know, feeling cool, feeling hype with himself, I'm sure God would just be looking at him. Look at this guy. You have done your worst. But that's all you can do. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So little did he know that God can never and will never be put in a tight corner. Now, the servants in verse, um, uh, I want to try and move very fast. The servants of the householder, you know, um, they came and said unto him, they, they were surprised. Now, of all the equations when Jesus was trying to, you know, uh, decrypt the encoded message, he didn't solve the riddle or the equation of who the servants were. But maybe that would be a discussion for now, for some other time. Or maybe, I don't know. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He gave the expo of who every other person was except the servants, but we can figure that out. So the servants of the householder, they were surprised, they were rattled, you know, and they asked him, sir, didn't you sow good seed in the field? How come we have tears all around? How come all these are showing up? Ah, Baba, what is happening here? And, you know, that tells me something. Connectivity and communication between the master and his servants. Always willing to inquire from the Lord. It's very, very important for anyone that will make a godly difference in his generation or in our generation, there must be a seamless connectivity between you and the Lord. Hallelujah. 
And he replied, like I said, they went to ask him. They didn't just start going to shout, hey, oh, what is happening? Oh, yeah, 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 let's begin to pray. Let's fire. Let's call for fire. Let's call for this and that. No. Baba, what is happening here? And he replied to them, call unto me and I will answer. And I will show you great and mighty things that you know not. I will reveal things to you. What did he say? <laughs> he knew where the problem came from. And immediately he told them, an enemy has done this. Hallelujah. And look at effective communication between the, the owner of the vineyard and his servants. Furthermore, they asked him. They, they didn't go out of their own frolic. Lord, you said concerning your word, we should command you, I command you. No. Or go in, test, die by fire. No, no way. What did they say? Look at what they said. Do you want us to go and pull them out? They didn't say, oh, yeah, 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 let's begin to pray. We have tears in the house. Oh, yeah, let's pull them out. Let's begin to pray and begin to kabash. No. Do you want us? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Do you want us to go and pull them out? So they sought for permission, authorization, before embarking on what seemed like a good endeavor. That is, is it part of your plan? No matter how good it is. Yes, it looks very good. It looks noble. It looks honorable. You know, sometimes to say, look, why do we, you, why you all, we keep saying the will of God, the will of God, the will of God, the will of God. This is no brainer. We know God gave us brain so that we can give him rest. You've heard that, right? God did not say you should not use your brain, sir. No. Simple. Is it part of your plan, sir? Should we go and look at? Imagine they would have gone to, up, to uproot the tears and they would have made serious blunder. But he said, no. Don't go. Don't do that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So his reply was no. You know could be the right answer you need. But for somebody, he said, my, every time I ask God for something, when the only way I can know that God is speaking to me is yes. Yes to my desire. No, sir. Sometimes he will tell you no. And that's the right answer for this season. Lord, I want this. No. Lord, I want to do this. No. Why? Because he knows better. Amen. 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 Okay. Ah. The way some people are looking at me, I don't like this. So maybe I should change the message and preach someone, something else. So his reply was no. And why did he say no? He said because in the process of pulling out the wheat, you may uproot. Sorry, in the process of pulling out the tears, you may also uproot the wheat. So, furthermore, still part of the divine answer to the inquiry, he said, let them continue to grow together until so there is a set time until when until when the harvest and in the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers gather together first the tears and bind them in the bundles to burn them but gather the wheat into my barn or storehouse. 
So at the time of harvest, automatically there will be separation. There will be difference. There will be distinction. It will be clear. Hallelujah. The tares will be burnt and the wheat will be gathered into his storehouse. Now, when you go to verse 36, the Bible said, after the multitude had been sent away, his disciples did what? They came to him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the disciples of Jesus came to him for explanation on the parable of the tears of the wheat. Now, this caught my attention. Disciples will always go back to Jesus. Disciples will always dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Disciples prioritize the hidden life far more than the surface life. Real disciples are interested in the secret life. And I'm not, when I'm talking about secret life, I'm not talking about uh, you understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. That is the dwell in not secret uh, uh -huh, abominable things so. That is the, the secret place of God, the place of power. They dwell in God's presence. They, they, they cherish the presence, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. That is where they draw life from. Disciples can never be bored with the presence of God. You see, I want to say this. There is a great danger in religion, religious living. There is serious risk of boredom and getting enticed with every wind of doctrine, with everything, all the antiques and the infrastructure that the enemy is pulling right now. Ah, look. Brethren, I must tell you, let, let's be sincere with ourselves. Except <laughs> we need, the, we need this, the help of God to stand in the days we are in and in the days to come. Because everything, sometimes you will, you will think you are standing. We all need the grace of God. So that's why we need, you know, we're talking about the wheat. This is a timely message. Because the wheat will know they cannot survive any moment outside the presence of God. They will get crushed. They will get corrupted. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, like I said, there is bottom in mere religion, but there is life, abundant life in Christianity, which is drawing from the life of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the disciples came to Jesus for explanation. So disciples are people, not Sunday, Sunday hearers. Of the world. They go back in their secret place and begin to dwell on the world. After hearing the sermon in church, maybe in the course of the week, maybe in their quiet time, Lord, can you explain this to me further? You said this in your word, enlighten me more. Hallelujah. And you know, when there is a sincere open heart for that, Jesus is ever willing to release 
So when they came to him for explanation, true disciples are not casual hearers. Hallelujah. So what did they say? They said, declare to us, that is, reveal to us the parable, the mystery of the test. They knew that, look, there is more to this. There is more to it. And he said to them, that is, he answered them. He answered them and said to them, the sower, hallelujah, hallelujah. He said, the sower, that is, he that soweth the good seed is the son of God. And who is the son of God? Oh, sorry, the son of man. Who is the son of man here? Please answer me. Who is the son of man? Who is the son of man? Who is the sower of the seed? Who is the sower of the good seed? Hallelujah. So, he said, the sower of the good seed is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The field here is where? So, it's not the church. The world. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15, he said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The world, the nation. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe the things that I have commanded you. So the field, so the world is a mission field. Hallelujah. And this, okay. So, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, that is God's people, God's children, sent forth as the light of the world. Is there in the Bible, hallelujah, praise the Lord. You can see it there, Abby. Eh? Okay, you can see it. Okay, the field is the word. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. And the tears are the... Hallelujah. So the good seed here also are the wheat. So when God sent forth his children into the world, the devil also planted his own children. So while... They started growing and their fruits started showing forth. The fruit also of the tears started showing forth. Now, initially, some of the tears, you would think they are sons of the light. You know, the Bible says the enemy transforms, it transfigures, pretending as an angel of the light, but he's an angel of darkness. So, but definitely, you can't fake it for too long. So, the fruit will show forth who, what you really carry. So, we have many, many professing Christians. So, you hear people say, oh, ah, Christian, 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 Christian. <laughs> Hallelujah. You, we know what we are talking about. The seed of the kingdom and the seed of the enemy. So he said the harvest is the end of the world, the end of age. And um, the reapers or the harvesters are the... Huh? The reapers are the... They are the angels that the householder will tell to bring forth the separation at the end of age. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And in, in verse 40, he says, As therefore the tears are gathered and burned 
in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend. So, the tears represent all things, everything that offends. All things that offend and them which do iniquity, whether animate or inanimate. So, tears represent animate and inanimate objects that cause offense and also cause or do iniquity, that make others to sin, that make others to trample. He said, they shall be gathered and they shall be cast, they shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the, shall we read verse 43 together? One, two, three, go. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who has ears to hear? Let him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, what Jesus was trying to say, to cut the long story short, at the end of age, the final destination of the tears is eternal destruction or the outcome while the outcome or final destination of the wheat is eternal bliss, eternal life. Which starts from now. Eternal joy. Daniel said, Some will wake up to eternal joy. In Daniel chapter 12, he said, Some will wake up to eternal life, and others will wake up to eternal damnation. So that's the difference between the wheat and the tears at the end of age. So are you? A wit or a tear. Before we pray this morning, I would like to admonish somebody. You can be a light. God has created you for this cause. God has made you, he has preserved you, he has reserved you for this cause. To be a shining light in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Be a tear. Be a doer of good works. You've been elected and selected by the Lord as a good seed. That is your destiny. That is your purpose. Live it. Live, not L-E-A-V-E, L-I-V-E. Live it. Hallelujah. To represent him as a light. There is, you know, there is darkness all around. You cannot beat them. You cannot afford to join them. He said, if you cannot beat them, you will join. You cannot afford to join them. As long as you keep joining them, you will, you will keep getting beaten. Blue, black. You can't afford to join because you were not even configured to operate that way. So you'll be operating against yourself. You'll be operating against your destiny. You yourself, something will tell you inside you that you are living outside your purpose. It is time to get back 
to what you were created to do. Something in you is even telling you. Yeah, that's the voice of the spirit telling you, come out of this. You were not made to be mingling and commingling here. No. You were made for something better. And I pray you are stepping out of darkness into the light. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. How can I be a wheat? How can I be a good seed? How can I operate as a good seed? Planted to, to, to operate in the world as God's representative in the midst of all the darkness in the world. It starts with receiving with meekness the implanted word. You know, I said something at the beginning of this message. The first parable that Jesus gave about the sower and the seed. One out of the four categories fell on a good ground. And what does that good ground represent? A honest heart. A good heart, a sincere heart, a humble heart that will receive the word of God and understand it and produce. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That is all it takes. The Bible says, receive. He said, laying aside James chapter 1. Laying aside every superfluity of nothingness, receive with meekness the engrafted word, the implanted word of God. So when you receive the word of God into your heart, it will a humble heart. That's all it is. And the word will begin to produce in your heart. That's the starting point. You receive God's word with, a, with honesty. Look, you know, uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 23. And I think Luke, the account of Luke makes it clearer. Please, you can write it down. Oh, you want to do that, right? Luke chapter 8. Verse 15. Luke chapter 8, verse 15. Maybe I should quickly read that. Luke chapter 8, verse 15 said, But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So it starts with a honest and good heart. To hear the word, to keep the word, to retain the word, to bring forth fruit by patience. I pray that the power and the grace to receive the word of God. The Lord will grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, the wheat are the people that receive the word of God. They cannot survive any moment outside the word of God. They can't. They can't. They feed on the word. They feast on the word. They live by the word. You know, David said, your word is lamp to my feet. That is before I will take any step. I must be guided by your word. And he said, light unto my path. Whatever decision, whether tactical or strategic, whether short-term goals or long-term goals, objectives, whatever it is, he said, 
I must be guided. In LD yesterday, Bra Raymond was talking about, you, you know, you were saying something about um, the uniqueness of the leadership principles we teach in the house. Everything is centered around, built around God. God is the center point. That's it. That's it. So I say something that if, you know, in leadership, you know, leadership academy, you are hearing everything, everything. They will tell you everything, all the principles and everything, you know, different people, even the, the professionals. An accountant is certified accountant and, you know, you know, expertise, and he hands-on experience and the encounter with the Holy Spirit. He shared it in the house. Now, when people like that are talking, you want to listen because talking about professional expertise, they have it and everything, and they are still saying, God! Man, you will know that you need God, sir. Even for your career. You know, some people think, oh, look, um, you know, my career is too techy, uh, it's too technical for God to. God will not. He's, he's, uh, if it is Bible matters, I can't, you know. But, you know, when we are talking about, I bet God is in the heavens. He doesn't know what's happening in Nigeria, Abi. Hallelujah. God wants to lead you in everything, He knows everything. 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 We are going to pray to God this morning. Lord, the only way you can be a wit is to live by the word of God. You know what Jesus said, according to the householder, allow them to grow. Leave them. But he knew something that as long as the wheat, the good seed, they have a godly foundation and they are feeding on what comes from the throne of grace. Forget it. They will never be shaken. Take them anywhere. Take them to UK. Take them to Canada. Take them to U.S., take them to Australia in the midst of LGBTQ or whatever it is that is happening. Take them anywhere. They will stand. While everybody is bowing down, you know, for the image. Oh, let me tell you something. The image of Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon, we thought it's just uh, my book of Bible story. It's happening live and direct. And Christians are bowing down. Allow our bow down. Bowing down. Every day. And some people will say, oh, no, 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 don't worry. I will bow down physically, but in my heart, I'm not bowing down. You have heard that, right? Or oh, I will bow and I will go and repent. I have grace. Amen. Hey. The wheat are being made. The wheat are being prepared. The wheat are being nurtured. You also, God wants you to stand for him as a wheat. Imagine everybody here including all the children, the adults, male, female, we stand for God anywhere, everywhere we are. And let me tell you, we are not afraid of any consequence. They know that service unto God and their faithfulness and stewardship with God comes with a price. Pastor, don't go there. It comes with a price. It can, <laughs> okay. I know you don't want to hear that. It will cost, it can cost you your job. 
Don't say that. Don't tell me that. I will tell you. But if it is going to cost you your job, you know, can you trust God enough that even he knew that that would happen? And you can only glorify him by not letting anything stand between you and him. And he will glorify himself in your life. And if anything is going to cost you your job, be rest assured that something better and bigger is on the way. We shall rise up on our feet. Lord, prepare me a sanctuary pure and holy try to dream oh we thank you Lord, prepare me. Not on me. By your word. By your spirit. To be a good seed. To be a weak. Unwavering. Unrelenting. Unfailing. In the name of Jesus. So that I will not fail. I will not fall. In the time of adversity. In the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray to God. Strengthen me in the inner man. Strengthen me, Lord. And so shall it be in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And amen.